Hey guys, EVP Man here. Now in today's video, we're gonna take a look at another Creality 3D printer. And this time, it's the Ender 3 S1 Pro. Now we've taken a look at the Ender 3 S1, but today we're taking a look at the Pro and we're gonna see what makes this printer a Pro version. So. Uh, we're going to take a look at the specs. We're then going to get a close-up look at these printers. We're going to compare it to the Ender 3S1, and we're going to see side-by-side side what has changed. Uh, we're also going to take a look at some of the prints, and I have to tell you, if you're looking for a printer that is tinker-free, something that you can just put it together within minutes, and also just power it up and start printing, uh, this is going to be the printer for you. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now, the very first thing that we're gonna notice about the Ender 3 S1 Pro is that it shares a lot of similarity with the Ender 3 S1. So, you're gonna see some changes. And while we look at the specs, it has the same bed dimensions. It also has automatic bed leveling, not using a BL Touch, but using Creality's proprietary leveling system, which works really, really well. But what's changed, and as you can see here, is that you have a PEI spring steel sheet. Uh, and that is done for a specific reason, because the Ender 3 S1 Pro is designed to be able to print high temperature materials like carbon fiber. <laughs> yeah, you heard that right, carbon fiber. So we're gonna be taking a look at the overall print samples that we've gotten uh, using the, uh, some carbon fiber filament that we have um, in our kind of lab area, and you'll see how good this quality is. So that PEI spring steel sheet is for printing those higher temperature materials, but it's gonna work well with, again, standard PLA, PETG, ABS, and all the things that you're printing normally. Now, in addition to that, the nozzle temperature has changed quite a bit. Uh, you're gonna be able to raise the temperature all the way up to 300 C, and the bed could go all the way up to 100 C. Now, that is, again, to be able to support these materials that require higher temperature to print. Now, keep in mind that when you're printing these higher temp materials, uh, having an enclosure is always a good idea. Now, uh, this has no enclosure, so you're gonna see the overall quality that I've gotten printing PETG or ABS through this printer, and I have to say that it's done a really good job, but once again, um, having some type of enclosure is still something that I would recommend. Now, the print speed is still the same, 60 to 150 millimeters per second, and it does have this Sprite Direct Drive, uh, which is, um, again, this, uh, the actual direct drive for this unit is different because it's a high temperature direct drive. It has no um, tubing inside, it's, it's solid, and it does a really nice job. The prints out, out of this thing are spectacular. Now, the other thing that you have is a four millimeter print nozzle, and in my opinion, it's a slight quieter, it's a little bit quieter than the Ender 3S1, and we'll see that as well. Now, the big story here is about the materials. PLA, ABS, TPU, wood, PTG, PA, and again, you'll see, uh, I'll show you some of the materials that we've been printing with just to overall see what kind of quality we were gonna get. And once again, I'm, I'm happily pleased with the overall quality. Now, it does have synchronized dual Z axis, just like the old one does, so you're gonna have the same type of experience there. And then you have a filament, a filament runout sensor, sensor, and then also you're gonna have power recovery. Now, from a spec perspective, you can see highlighted here that there's a couple things that are a little bit different. One of the other things that I'd say is different is the actual fact that this has a touch screen. Yeah, you heard that right. This thing has a touch screen. Now, there are some aesthetic differences too, and they change some things around a little bit. Um, and in my version, it also has an LED light that you're gonna be able to see that actually illuminates the work area, which is something that I think is fantastic as well. Matter of fact, when you see my 3SI, you're gonna notice that I had already upgraded mine to include a light bar as well because it does matter and it makes a difference, especially when you're doing a lot of prints. So let's go ahead and take a look at the overall print quality. We'll take a look at the printers themselves uh, and we'll do a comparison between these two printers. But once again, if you're interested in picking up an Ender 3 S1 Pro or Simple, you know, the standard one, you can't go wrong. This is a tinker-free printer that has incredible prints. Let's check them out. Now, while the Ender 3S1 and the 3S1 Pro almost look identical, you have to take a closer look so that you can see the differences. Uh, first of all, you'll notice that the touch screens are different, and we're gonna take a look at uh, each of them. Actually, only one has a touch screen, and the other one has a knob and click uh, model, which is very similar to what we've seen with other Creality products. Uh, the base itself is also very different, so you have the actual molded area. This one is all solid one color, and it has a larger drawer, and I'll show you the differences there. Uh, the actual extruders, while they're both uh, their new extruder, uh, this is a full metal extruder, this one isn't, and you'll see that as well. Uh, you do have the two adjustment knobs, right? 
that you see in each one of those areas, so that's similar. And then what you'll notice on mine is that both of them have lights, uh, and that's new. Uh, I actually ordered uh, a light kit for mine because I prefer having lights and I saw it was available so I went ahead and ordered it and actually added it on. But the Pro comes with a light kit and if you have a 3S1, highly recommend the light kit, love it. Uh, and that comes standard with the Pro. Now the other thing that we'll find is that the, uh, the inputs, so SD and USB-C are standard on both. And then there's some changes from the wiring on the back. So where you actually have the plug on the Pro and where you have the plug, the power plug on the S1 has been shifted. So now everything is on the same side versus on this side that it's not. But those, that's some minor differences. You do have the uh, filament runout sensor, right, in the same place. And then you have the mounting spool, which you can move left to right. Uh, so let's take a closer look at both of these. Uh, we'll take a look at, uh, we'll focus first of all on the S1 uh, Pro so you can see everything that's going on there. And we're also going to take a look at some of the prints because we did print carbon fiber material so that you can get a sense of how well it does. Now the 3S1 Pro, same as we mentioned, same uh, inputs for loading your prints. And you can see your SD card here and your USB-C. The drawer is wider. Let me take it out so you can see how much wider this is. This is a much larger drawer. If I compare it to the 3S1, and when we put it right next to it, notice the difference, big difference. So like the extra space, uh, that's fantastic. All right, so it gives us a lot of space to put more goodies in there. Uh, you do have the adjustment on the bottom, but I really don't use it with the auto leveling. Uh, you have the difference here in the bed, so let's go ahead and lift this up. And then this is uh, the sheet that you have. And we'll see if you can get this in an angle right here, but I just want you to see how good that first layer is. Uh, I ran this on purpose because I wanted to show you guys how clean that was. That first layer print is pretty spectacular. And let's make sure that that's in focus so you can see that. There you go. You can see how clean that is. Now, at the very end here, it has kind of like a little lift. That's because that's where I stopped it. I just wanted to show you what it looked like. So great first layers. Uh, it sticks really well. And then it is dual sided. So you can use it uh, on each side. And again, the magnet that it has, uh, the magnetic sheet, uh, really uh, grabs in really nicely. Now, the uh, actual print head itself, uh, right here, uh, you'll notice that it does have, or the extruder actually has the uh, metal. So this is an all metal material. And uh, the wires, I also noticed that are a different color. I do believe, at least uh, in, in my experience, that this seems to sound a few decibels quieter, at least the fans as it's doing its print. And as far as uh, any other of the areas here, uh, that's all we actually saw. Now, uh, on the very bottom also, one thing I wanted to highlight is that com as I compare it to the, uh, uh, the Ender 3S1, there is insulation. That was one thing I wanted to mention as well. I didn't really see it, so underneath, um, if you go under the bed of the Ender 3S1, there isn't any insulation. This has insulation, which is also really cool. It's going to make, uh, make things stay warm and toasty much longer, and it's also going to require less power to warm up. Now, as you take a look at the menu here, uh, this has changed quite a bit. So the menu is completely different than what you compare it to the 3S1. Everything is touch, obviously, but then the menu itself is also different. So in the home area, you can see your nozzle temperature, bed temperature, speed, and your Z. You also then can go into print and it's going to read and then it give you access. If you go into the, uh, this ready area here, you can actually um, you know, deal with if you want to change the filament, right? Heat up the nozzle and get a little bit of it out. You could also go into this manual area here and just choose your preheat settings. And one of the things that you can do is if you, if you are working with other material uh, and not using ABS, for example, you could change, leave the label, but just change the settings. That's something that I do at times as well. Under the settings area, uh, you're going to find, again, your leveling, your PLA settings, ABS settings that are your preset ones, and then the language that you'd like to set up. Now, one thing I wanted to highlight before we moved on is the fact that the bed also does have a handle. This is nice. Um, I've never had a problem grabbing my, the print bed on the side and just moving it forward, especially with these little tabs. But if you are printing at higher temperatures and you're worried about you know, just the higher temperature, uh, I've never been burned, but just in case, what you could do is uh, just grab it right here to move it forward or back. Now, as I mentioned, I upgraded the actual light bar on mine, 3S1, and it does work very similarly. So you have a little switch on the side that allows you to initiate it. And for the most part, everything is very similar, the print quality, but the bed, I did make some changes. So let me show you what I changed. Now, on the bed, uh, Joel had mentioned this in a video, I think it was today or yesterday. Uh, he mentioned that he found that the actual bed itself it wasn't sticking as much as it was when it was like brand spanking new out of the box. Uh, 
I didn't have that experience, but I wanted to switch it, so I switched it. And the sheets are very similar, right? This is, uh, I got this from Creality. It is an Ender bed. It's a PI. And I actually prefer this one versus the one that came stock. All I did is I, cha I changed that piece, um, this piece, and that was it. And I've been having some great experience when it comes to my prints. The actual nozzle uh, or, the, or the extruder itself, you're having, it's all plastic, right? And then, as I mentioned, on the sides here, the wiring is a different color as well. But the feeding mechanism, the actual uh, CR touch is the same. I find that this one runs a little bit louder than the other one, as I mentioned. And you don't have, all, you, all I have is the, what this uh, bed has, or the actual sheet itself has for pulling forward and back. Um, I don't have a handle like the other one does. Now, just briefly, the actual menu itself is different. So this is how you'd access things. And you can see everything is different. So, uh, you know, you had all of these controls were at the very bottom. They're not even labeled the, the same. And then here you have information about the printer. Uh, but this is where if you wanted to print, you choose here to be able to get to your prints. If you wanted to go into the prepare area for uh, the same functions that you had in the other one, this is where you would go. But as you can see, it's very manual-like. There's no touch screen, but still the screen is really legible. I do prefer the touch screen, though. All right, so now let's talk about overall print quality. And I'm going to share with you kind of like the, the print material that I was using. So here I was using this carbon fiber ABS blend on the printer. Let me show you what the prints look like. They did really, really well. Uh, first of all, we were using uh, this. Uh, this is kind of like a model uh, rim. So we're going to bring this into focus here so you can see it. So really, really nice quality. It did have supports uh, because of uh, the bottom area here needs to have it. I'm just going to rotate it slowly so you guys can see it. And then you can see what this looks like right here. Very happy with, with the print. And one of the things that really surprised me is that this is an open area, right? So, and it's actually colder. So this is around 68 degrees. And uh, it did well. I had no enclosure, even though I would recommend one where you're going to print these type of materials. Look how sharp that came out. Now, if we compare it to its PLA counterpart, and I printed this on the 3S1, Notice the differences. You know, really, really good quality, right? Just one is PLA, one is an ABS carbon fiber blend. Nice. All right, let's take a look at another print. Uh, benchies, time for the benchies. So we did some benchies too. The benchies, uh, this one, I don't know if it was because of my filament. So, because I normally don't have anything like this going on. Uh, but anyways, if you look at the first layer, first layer looks uh, very similar, if not the same. Right, and then the overall quality is going to be the same. I think I have something going on with this filament because maybe I have to put it in the dryer because it shouldn't look that way. But anyways, this is what you can see how it looks. Next are our XY cubes. Uh, measured them; they measured the same. All right. Still, I think I have some some small issues with the filament, but overall, the quality uh, looks the same. Now, the next thing I did is I printed two functional, a couple functional prints, right? So I did some drywall screws, right? Why buy drywall screws when you can actually uh, print them yourself? So quality was good. This one I was just testing out, so ignore the hole there. Uh, but uh, this was what I, I printed on the Pro, and everything was really nice and clean. Uh, this I printed on the S1, and again, I'm seeing some small little things going on here. Uh, this is going to go on the wall anyway, but uh, this, I think, is just due to that, the filament uh, probably needing to be dried. Now, these are two key tags. Uh, this one was printed on the Pro. And you can see that first layer, how clean that is. Really, really nice. And then this was printed on the 3S1, not Pro. But again, still clean, no tweaking, uh, out-of-the-box settings, PLA. Now, both of these printers have some prints that I just wanted to share with you that I printed right off of the card. Uh, this is a Bitcoin, right, that was on it. And I just wanted to highlight that, you know, while this printed, uh, there were uh, no supports, right? So, you know, just printed just like this. And the fact that there are no supports and everything came out really nice and clean is very, very impressive. Uh, we also had the cat, which I'm sure you've seen before, printed, All right? Look how clean that was. All right, no stringing. We had a rabbit. And you can see what the rabbit looks like. Good quality too. No stringing. 
And then uh, the last thing we printed was a handle. Right? That came on there as well. We did print a couple other parts that I just wanted to see how well the material did. This was the part that I printed as well in a previous video, but I printed it again. Uh, nice spot and finish. And just like the overall look, I like the feel too. This is really nice. It's, it's a very, very durable part. Um, this is a, a leg holder for a 3D printer. Uh, did some PETG. Right? This is for a printer that we're building. Right? And again, really, really like that finish. Now the next thing I wanted to do is just give you a sense of how loud this printer is. But I got a lot of stuff going on. We have a lot of printers. Now one, big, now one of the biggest questions you may have is, does this print high temperature material? So let me show you what I was printing. So I printed this carbon fiber ABS, right? This is what I printed on it. This is our running. So we're gonna do a sound floor, right? So just gonna look at what is the current sound level and then we'll compare it once we have the printer running. All right, so as you can see, it's anywhere from between 45 and 53. Let's get the printer running. All right, so the printer started. What we're going to do is go back to our sound, and then we'll see how quiet it is. So not much difference there. Tell you it's not doing bad. It's pretty spot on. Now watch how that first layer goes down. And I'll tell you, this is what I like so much about this, uh, this Ender series is it's, it's really just out of the box, tinker free, it just works. Great first layers, um, no real tweaking, you know, using standard settings, and it's going. Let's take a look at that layer, look how nice that is right there. It's really, really nice and crisp. So guys, that wraps up our comparison and review of the Ender 3S1 Pro. See you in the next video.